Greetings, everyone. I recently picked this up at a, a thrift store, like I sometimes do, at Commodore 120, and it's actually in there. And uh, unlike a lot of the machines I've picked up, it has the box. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of read what's on the outside of the box and then test it out and see what kind of repairs the machine needs and then play around with it for a bit. Now, when I was a kid, uh, my dad actually bought one of these to evaluate for the school district he was a librarian at, and um, I don't think the evaluation went all that well as it, they continued to buy Commodore 64s and eventually just migrate to PCs. Um, so that said, I actually got to play with one for a really long time as a kid, and I remember, uh, for the most part, it spent all of its time in the C64 mode. Um, and then I played around with... Um, what was it called? Desk term on the Commodore 128 uh, with a fancy UART serial adapter, and it could actually do like 9600 baud um, modem, probably go even faster than that, uh, which is pretty nice for an 8-bit machine. Um, that said, he had the uh, monitor in the 1571 floppy drive, and the rest of this stuff uh, I never saw, especially the mouse, which I think is super rare. Let's zoom into this real quick. So 1902 color monitor, 1571. It says single disk drive, but I know it was um, double sided actually. You could do 360K. Um, really crappy Commodore printer. And 12, 2400 baud modem, 1350 mouse, which again, really pretty rare. And the C120 itself, and then. Home Finance, Telecommunications, Word Processing, Spreadsheet. All of which I'm sure you could do with that. Um, I remember too this uh, came with disks which I don't have either for a CPM and I remember booting up CPM and playing with it and going, well that's neat. I, I never could find anything to do with it but I, I suspect you could actually make all the word processing apps that were written for CPM work on it, stuff like that. Let's pop this open and see what we have in the machine itself. Inside here is the power supply. And I can tell it's, uh, it's one of these... Um, well, I'll have to open it up, but I think it's uh, one of the ones that's uh, resin potted because it weighs an awful lot, but I, I'm not entirely sure. And the ones that were potted in resin are... are prone to overheating. I'm not entirely sure about the Commodore 128 though. I'll have to open that up later. I noticed it's actually uh, uses Torx security screws. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Probably after I test it. Oh, there's a sheet of paper at the bottom here. It says power light fell through rows 78YUGHVB. Don't to print up. Okay. Won't print up. Well, it's actually a remarkable shape. Um, not too brown at all. It's missing its power light, so maybe that's something rather concerning. Um, serial number CA1811864. Opening voids warranty. And of course the uh, power on off reset uh, joystick, another joystick, or usually mouse joystick. And cartridge port, cassette port, serial video, um, channel 3-4. RF out, RGB out for the 80 column only mode and user port for this. You plug the modem into nothing on the other side. Kind of sucks though, it's missing the uh, LED. And the plastic seems to be worn down there as well. So I think I should connect this up and see if it works at all. So while I was finding cables for this, I had a sudden realization what this piece of paper means, and that is the power supply has fallen through the case and that these various keys don't work. So 
so it obviously has some problem. So, uh, but let's try powering it up here. And I can see a red light down there, and I see a picture. Voila. Alright. Let's see, it says the 7 key doesn't work. Yeah, the 7 key doesn't work. 7 key. 8 key doesn't work. I don't know how hard that is to fix. I suspect I'll have to pull the keyboard apart and clean the back of the membrane. Should pop this thing open and see. The 7 8 don't work. Why you. Oh, I see a pattern here. GH and BB. So, yeah, there's the pattern basically. Um, it's these keys right here. Don't work. Time to open her up and see what's inside. So, I've undone the screws in the back and uh, this comes apart. There's a brown ground strap here a pull apart. Oops. The keyboard itself. Looks okay. And this piece of plastic, I'm not even sure if that's uh oh, there's another one right here. I'm not sure what these go to. No. Put them in my pile of parts. And then uh heat sink slash RF shield that shall undo the screws for as well. So I've pulled I've pulled all the screws out of the heat sink slash RF shield, but it uh still hasn't come open. And then I noticed um down here. Uh if I can get to focus. It's actually soldered. It seems to be just right there, um, so I'll have to uh, right by the keyboard connector. So I'll have to wick that off. Then I think the RF shield will come apart. Okay, so I ended up just uh, tapping that, and the solder came right off. And just undo this, and some heat sink paste on each one of these tabs to. I'll cool the machine off. This thing, after all, ran at uh, two or four megahertz. I think four megahertz if it was in CPM mode, and two megahertz in Commodore 128 mode, and then one megahertz in C64 mode. So I've undone all the screws in the back of the keyboard. And I, I should mention, by the way, the keyboard itself. I mean, there's not a lick of dust on it. I wonder how much this thing was even used. Because there's no gunk underneath the keys like there normally would be on a well-used computer. Uh, these uh, won't come out, I don't think. I have to research it unless I desolder all these wires and then pull the wires up through the board, which sounds like a giant pain in the ass, to be honest with you. But if I separate this, I can see it's a pretty standard PCB carbon contact sort of system. Um, the fact that those two rows are not working almost suggests maybe the is there a bad trace in here. The fact the fact that it's basically these these uh, two rows here um, suggests that one of these uh, wires is bad. So I'm almost wondering if I need to actually pull this apart and clean it. I'm going to research it a bit more and then um, get back to this machine later. And ultimately I don't want to do that, uh, pull the board apart, just because um, I'm going to have to uh, clean these off well enough so that I can straighten them out to pull the board out this way. 
and then um, when I put it back together, which is the hard part, I'm going to have to make it so that the wires go straight back in. Um, when they were assembling this thing, I have to imagine this was hand done. Now, my hat's off to them. So the other night I was uh, chatting with some people on the Commodore subreddit um, about this issue and uh, decided it was maybe worthwhile to swap the CIA around, which I did. And the keyboard started working again, so I thought, well, looking at the other chip, it was like it looked fine, no corrosion or anything like that, and it wasn't getting overly hot, so maybe I swap them back. And the keyboard continued to work. Um, and so I thought, well, okay, maybe it just need to be reseated. So I did that, and then I tried it again just now, and it was not working. So <laughs> maybe, maybe it is the cable. So, but uh, tell me some interesting things. For starters, the CIA is what controls the keyboard, which I didn't actually know. I guess I could have suspected that. Um, and then the other thing is, is that on on the C128, at least the U.S. model, the CIA's were actually socketed from the factory, which is handy. So let me go ahead and retry this. It comes up. Yeah, familiar AC wine. This machine's half. So it's doing that with the shift keys down. So. And the shift keys down the keyboard appears to work on those quote unquote bad keys. Um, so maybe it is maybe it is the CIA. Let me go ahead and swap them back and, and retry it here. So ultimately I have the keyboard working again, but to swap the chips has made uh, the disk drive a bit unstable. I bought this um, SD card interface from someone in the UK, and I've seen it work once or twice now, uh, but that other CIA chip um, has made things pretty unreliable. I almost wonder if it's a cooling issue, maybe if I stick the chip in the freezer for a while and then plop it in the machine, it would work a bit more reliably. Um, I went onto eBay uh, to find a replacement part and um, it seems like all the CIA chips in the US at least are being sold by a single guy for $50 a chip which uh, you know as much as I want this thing to work again I'm not going to pay that much for one. Um, there's some resellers in, in Germany, an awful lot of resellers in Germany, one about $20 um, per chip and about eight dollars shipping, so I might I might see if that's worthwhile. Um, so we'll see. The funny thing about these uh, retro repair videos is you kind of get stuck halfway through because um, of weird issues like this. And the C sixty four is probably one of the or the C one twenty eight for that matter is probably one of the worst machines to quote unquote repair just because all the custom chips in it that you absolutely cannot get anymore. Um, which is unfortunate. I got two packages in the mail. They actually arrived the same day, which is kind of amusing. Uh, this one from Slovakia and um, customs label in the back there. And then this one from uh, Germany. And uh, it's kind of neat because it has uh, all kinds of German stamps on the side. Uh, Peanuts cartoon, which is actually an American cartoon, but um, a, a car called a Wart Wartburg 13 and um, a Audi Quattro. Uh, kind of neat. Okay, so the machine came up just fine, which expected it would. Keyboard's acting a bit wonky. Okay, now actually it's fine. That's a good sign. It's loading. Alright.
I would say that's fixed-ish. Um, so I think what I need to do now is stick the SD card into my PC and copy a game to it and see if it actually works works. So replacing the uh, CIA chip uh, solved the keyboard issue. Um, so issue solved. Uh, I think the next step is I'm going to get some um, stick on heat sinks for the two uh, good CIA chips I have. Um, and then redo the heat sink paste that uh, is in there. Uh, some pretty nice stuff. And I think that will do it. Okay, so this is what I've uh, finished up. It's all mounted in there and I've used some hot glue to kind of melt it to the metal plate there. It seems to be staying. I'm not sure what... Uh, I have looked, honestly, and I, I'm not sure what uh, out-of-the-box these come with. Whatever it is, it got knocked off. I think this thing was dropped at some point. Because uh, some of these were actually floating loose in the case. Um, and I just need to attach this to the metal frame there. We're all done. Uh, so there it is, all buttoned up. Uh, let's actually see if it works. I kind of forgot to test it. And it looks just fine, actually. Let's just pan up to the TV set. Alright. And... Uh, shift locks on. The dumb thing about this machine is it's got two caps lock keys. Not sure why. And they both function, anyhow. Uh, so the slip of paper said that seven, eight were broken. And then YU were broken. Working. GH were broken. And VD was broken. And it works. And if I type in go 64, are you sure? Yes. Awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some videos of it actually working here at the end. And the way I've captured those is I have a, a StarTech USB 3 uh, capture board and it's connected to uh, an Intel compute stick. That sits behind a TV set and it runs Windows 10. It's pretty cool.